All right, here's our second group of marine organisms to study in marine biology. This is the lecture on worms and mollusks, a group of organisms that we call lophocotrochozoans. Um, lophotrochs are the simple worms and mollusks, and basically when we look at their characteristics, they all have that uh, protostome uh, line of development where the mouth is first and then the anus comes second. Um, all of them do have the modal uh, ciliated larval stage. So at that stage of their life, they are modal and um, they are modal in their adult life as well. Uh, they exhibit bilateral symmetry, which means there is only one plane uh, will divide the organism into roughly mirror image halves. So you get that dorsal ventral uh, surface. So the dorsal will be the back, the ventral will be the, the belly side, and then anterior towards the head and posterior being towards the tail region. Uh, they are triploblastic. Um, because these organisms are tri triploblastic, that means their bodies have developed from the three different germ layers as discussed in the uh, uh, lecture on introduction to animals. <clears throat> so the germ layers are the endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. And if you need to review what those uh, layers do, go back to that lecture or your lecture notes. Um, basically, shared characteristic of all these organisms is that they have a lophophore, and that is an unusual feeding appendage that bears hollow tentacles. So the body cavities, we're going to revisit the body cavities here. There are three basic types of body cavities exhibited in organisms, and you could see that the three body cavities are the acelomate, which you could see in, in letter C there in the picture, and then you have the pseudocelomate, which is letter B, and then the coelomate organism, which is the top picture there, letter A. Um, in an acelomate organism, there is no body cavity, and the organ organs uh, have direct contact with the epithelium. And the acelomate here, this is uh, common in platyhelminths, which are flatworms. So you see the body covering is from the ectoderm, the digestive tract, is derived from the endoderm germal, germ layer, and then the tissue-filled region is from the mesoderm. In the pseudocelomate, uh, common in, in uh, the simple worms or ribbon worms, uh, the mesoderm is part, partly lines uh, fluid-filled body cavity, and the organs are held in place loosely. So you can see the pseudocelum here, which is that uh, uh, fluid-filled body cavity there. And then you have the digestive tract in yellow here, which is derived from the endoderm. And then you have the muscle layer from the mesoderm. And then the body covering on the outside here in blue would, would be derived from the ectoderm. And then the coelomated uh, body cavity, uh, the picture here you see an annelid. This would be the earthworm. Uh, earthworms are annelids, which are segmented worms. So all segmented worms have the coelomate. Uh, body cavity, which the fluid-filled body cavity is uh, with a complete lining called the peritoneum. And that peritoneum, that lining, is derived from the mesoderm. And what the peritoneum does is it allows the organs, the internal organs, to be attached to one another so they can be suspended within a particular place. So if you look in the, in the picture here, here you can see the coelom, the true coelom there, and the body covering for, is from the ectoderm, and then the tissue lining the coelom and suspending internal organs is derived from that mesoderm layer. And then, of course, the internal organs itself would be derived from the endoderm. So let's look at some examples of uh, lophotrochs. Uh, the first phylum, so we're looking at the domain Eucara, kingdom Animalia, and, and now we're in the phylum Platyhelminthes. And these are the marine flatworms, or flatworms in general. There are also uh, freshwater species of, of platyhelminths. But a platyhelminth is a, a flatworm. Um, some people refer to these as nudibranchs. Uh, here you can see their, their uh, very colorful appearance. Um, they're pretty cool looking creatures. Uh, they are carnivorous. Uh, actually, some of them will go ahead and attack other flatworms. So they have that cannibalistic nature to them. So we have the phylum platyhelminthes as far as classification or taxonomy. The next group, uh, again, domain Eucara, kingdom Animalia. Uh, now we're at the phylum Rotifera. These are the rotifers. 
Um, here you can see the basic anatomy of a rotifer. Uh, you have the cilia at the top around this crown called the corona, and they'll help pull food into the mouth. And then you have the, the mastax there, which will help grind up the food further. And then the digestive gland. And then you have the pseudocelum, the stomach, following down into the intestine. And then you can see the anus there. And then you have a foot with toes. And here are examples of what rotifers would look like. Again, there are both marine and freshwater species of rotifers. Phylum uh, nematia. Uh, the uh, Nemateans are, are ribbon worms, and here you can see various examples of marine ribbon worms. Um, the basic anatomy of the ribbon worm here is you have these sensory papillae, and then uh, you have the cephalic slit right there. And then in internal anatomy, you have the brain and the mouth uh, all the way through there, and the proboscis is, is helping with feeding. You have the foregut, and then the intestine that will follow through. And we'll look at some of these examples in class. And then you have that lateral nerve cord. So pretty simple organisms. Um, these are the ribbon worms. The next group are the domain Eucara, kingdom Animalia, phylum Bryozoa. And when you go, let's jump over to the kingdom Plantae. Uh, you do have uh, Bryozoans in uh, the kingdom Plantae, and Bryozoans are moss. So here we have, uh, instead of plants, we have animals in the phylum Bryozoa, and these are moss-like animals, so they kind of have that moss-like appearance to them. Um, here you can see different examples. So if you look, uh, basically what helps giving them more of that moss-like appearance would be those tentacles that come out from the mouth. So if you look here, you have the, the tentacles with the mouth, you have that skeletal cavity, you have the stomach in blue there, and then you have a, a retractor muscle that help pull that into that skeletal cavity or that kind of like shell-like structure. And then uh, following through, so you have the tentacles which help pull food into the mouth, and then it will follow through through the stomach, and then the anus is right here. So uh, that is uh, another, it's, it's a relatively simple animal, but it does have that complete uh, digestive tract there. Of course, because it's a protostome, the mouth developed before the anus. And then here you could see uh, how a uh, brarazone would attach to a, a surface there. So the egg is discarded through external organs and then that attached to a surface and then grow. Again, they, they are some colorful creatures as well. Uh, phylum Pharonida, uh, these are the horseshoe worms. Uh, very simple again, uh, tentacles, mouth, you have the trunk, the intestine will fall through to an anus. So here you can see the, the feathery-like appearances of the horseshoe worms. And then of course, uh, ones that you are more familiar with, these are the segmented worms. Um, this would be the domain, again, Eucara, Kingdom Animalia. Our phylum here is Annelida. And the annelids are segmented worms. So each segment here, and this is where our earthworm comes into play. Uh, our earthworm is grouped into here. Uh, here we have a, a coelom, a true coelom, and if you look up here we have a complete digestive tract again from mouth all the way down to the anus. And if you look you have the, the mouth and then you have the cerebral ganglia. Those would be the, the simple nerves that make up the brain. So you have mouth, you have pharynx, esophagus, and the crop will be used for grinding up food, uh, storing food I mean, and then the gizzard. Uh, is used for grinding up food right before it enters the intestine and falls the, the body all the way uh, down. Here in the earthworm, the clitella that helps separate the anterior end from the posterior end. Um, uh, simple nerves that run along. Uh, each segment is kind of uh, repeated, so it goes all the way down. You have these repeated segments, and that's where the, the earthworms, phylum, and other worms that share its name come from, the annelids. Uh, basically, the marine species, which you see over here, these are, are, are polychaetes. So marine worms are called polychaetes, and instead of, like in the earthworm, they have on their dorsal side, not dorsal side, the, the ventral surface, uh, to separate the, the ventral surface from the dorsal surface, if you feel, uh, they'll have like little CT or setae on the bottom, 
that give it that rough appearance. And those are like little hairs that will extend and help the earthworm move. Those are underneath. In the polychaetes, you could see the, the hairs, uh, they have extensions off to the side there. And then uh, you have the phylum Brachiopoda. These are, are lamp shells. Uh, again, you could see the, the basic uh, anatomy of a lamp shell there. And uh, up in here would be the special characteristic that all these organisms share, share in common, that lophophore. And then the bigger group of this uh, group of animals would be, of course, the phylum mollusca. And mollusk means soft body. Uh, so write that down. Um, basic characteristics of mollusks, mollusks or soft-bodied organisms are that they do have a mantle, and that is a tissue that makes a calcium carbonate shell. Um, here you can see the mantle right here. Uh, they do have a, a foot, which is a muscular appendage, appendage that serves different purposes de depending on the class of mollusk. So if you look, the foot on, on this particular organism uh, is down here. And then they have the radula, and here you can see that radula there uh, coming out of the mouth region, which is a scraping tongue-like mouth part to help for ingestion. Uh, if we look <clears throat> as far as mollusks, the circulatory system is an open circulatory system, um, unlike ours, which is a closed circulatory system where we have the veins, arteries, the heart, that's all a closed system. Well, an open circulatory system means that the fluid called the hemolymph, uh, the fluid or hemo, you think of blood, the hemolymph will basically be pumped in and out of cavities that are called the hemocyl. And the organs uh, directly get oxygen and nutrients as the, the uh, hemolymph is pumped into the hemocyl bass. Uh, the respiratory system for these organisms is our, our gills. Um, digestion, they have a complete digestive tract from mouth to anus. Uh, the nervous system is a simple brain with two nerve cords. Uh, and finally, uh, reproduction is sexual reproduction. So you have the exchange of sperm and egg there, and that is done via uh, external fertilization. If you look at the development, uh, you have the trochophore stage, which is the free swimming planktonic larvae with several bands of cilia uh, right here. So here you can see a trochophore. And if you ever find that when you do a plankton toe, you're looking at mollusk's development there. Uh, the veliger stage is the second larval that includes a shell with a ciliated vellum that extends beyond the shell and it's used for both swimming and food collection. So you can see that uh, right here. So here you get that, uh, um, that shell and the vellum that would extend out beyond it. And then eventually in adults, especially in, in the gastropods, uh, the, these are ones with shells, uh, you get this thing called torsion. And it's a pretty cool process if you, if you study it, but basically the development, uh, torsion is when the organs inside have a sudden rotation. So the organs would, would have this rotation to kind of fit into the shell as the adult develops. Uh, taxonomic classes of mollusks. So let's look at classification really quick. You have the domain eukarya, kingdom, animalia, phylum mollusca, now we're going to look at classes. So class gastropoda, these are slugs and snails. Uh, they have one shell in snails, uh, no shells in slugs. They undergo torsion uh, if they have the shell there. Then you have the class bivalvia. Uh, this is two hinged shells, which includes clams, oysters, scallops, and mussels. Um, they have no radula. Uh, these organisms are filter feeders, so they'll pull food in through an incurrent siphon and then get rid of waste to an excurrent siphon. You have the class cephalopoda. Uh, there should be P-O-D-A here. Uh, in the class cephalopoda, which means head foot, cephala head poda foot, uh, this would be the squid and the octopus. Uh, the foot is modified into tentacles or arms. Uh, the shell is re reduced and internal in the squid. Uh, that shell will become the pen or missing altogether in the octopus. Uh, these are some of the most intelligent uh, of invertebrates. And then you have the class uh, polyplacophora, which are chitons. And these are organisms that have a shell which has eight plates, and they cling tightly to rock surfaces. So here you can see uh, more of what mollusks look like. And that's our, our simple lecture on worms and mollusks.